disarm dissension so what do you do when somebody responds to a private message you've sent them and they're a little bit rude or maybe they're a little bit concerned over why a, a perfect stranger would even dare contact them someone they don't even know or have never met before so this is the goal by the way before I start reading off these examples the goal is is not going to be to overly explain yourself like you're guilty for doing something wrong because you're not doing anything wrong whatsoever and uh, the goal isn't to go in the attack or defensive mode or offensive mode or any of that stuff. The goal is to disarm them, take the bullets out of their holster if they're just being rude, mean-spirited, or, or whatever. If they're mean-spirited, actually, I just wouldn't even write them back whatsoever and just move on. But if they're just being a little bit rude or if they're concerned that a stranger is writing them, I will honor and respect that, and I will turn the table a little bit on them in a respectful way. And if you can make them laugh, make them chuckle a little bit, even better. So here are some examples. I like talking to new people regularly instead of only the same people day in and day out. Have you ever had a conversation with someone who never expands their circle? They're so boring. I hope it's cool I messaged you the way that I did. If you don't mind me asking, why did you write me back? Engaging, hey, and respectful. Here's another one. I like meeting new people. I can't imagine how boring life might become if I were to stop expanding my circle of friends. Does that make sense? Honoring and respecting again, nice, short, and sweet. And here's another one. Ever talk to someone who hasn't expanded their circle of friends in a really long time? They are so incredibly boring. I want to never become that closed off, stale person, so I've made it a part of my regular thing to talk to new people. If you don't mind me asking, what are you all about? Those are great. And you know what? They still might be rude after that. And if they are, they're basically telling you, I don't want to talk to nobody. I just want to stay within my close niche of friends. And you just you got to respect that too and then, and then just uh, stop writing. But this is also going to get people to uh, become more friendly to you as well, where they might have been concerned at first. And now you've successfully disarmed them. They're not concerned anymore. Much better chance of a meaningful connection, to be honest with you. In fact, if you can successfully disarm people after they have some concern or they're being a little bit rude, then your bond, generally speaking, your connection is going to be a bit deeper than if there was there was no dissension or rudeness or concern at all. That's just the way that it is because you've proven yourself to them. Much like um, you gain trust with people through the hard times, not the easy times. The easy times is nothing being tested. Your true colors ain't going to come out. It's the hard times that you go through with people. You find out who your friends are, who you can trust, who you can't. It's, it's sort of along the same lines of that. So here's one thing you could do, and I'm not saying you have to do this, but if you really want to stretch yourself, this could be the difference between earning six figures and seven figures. Go out there on purpose and get people to react rather than respond, but don't go overboard with that. Just you know, find a healthy balance there too. And, um, and if you get a lot of people to just uh, write you back or react with some concern in their tonality, then that is an opportunity for you to disarm them and to practice disarming so that you get really good at it. And the more people that you disarm, the more people that you can make laugh, the more people that you can make them uh, return to a childlike state, <laughs> remember what it was like when they were a kid. Those are the kinds of things that you're going to form really deep connections with. And when you recommend something like your opportunity, they are much more receptive and much more likely to do it. So... That is a very good skill to learn, how to disarm dissension overall. It's very good. All right, moving right along with this document here. In a way, this is like a confrontation. Confrontations, there's many different kinds and many different examples of confrontation. But the aim is to renew and restore, not tear down and disrespect. When most people confront, it, they're tearing down and, and disrespecting. I'm sure you've done it. I've done it in the past years when I started learning this stuff and my own personal growth and development. I've become much more consciously aware of it, and I've, I've stopped doing that. And now my brain is focused on renewing and restoring, honoring and respecting, and not tearing down and disrespecting. A lot of times our gut feeling, especially without enough personal growth and development, we just want to go into attack mode or defensive mode or offensive mode, and we want to tear down and disrespect and dishonor, and we may not even realize that that's what we're doing, but a lot of times we are when someone just reacts to something that we do or they're a little bit rude, and, and, and our mode of confrontation is basically to tear down and, and disrespect, tear them a new one, show them what's up, you know, all those sorts of things, and there is no reason for that except to satisfy our ego 
because it makes us feel good. But that feel good is going to last for about a split second and a half because what you're essentially doing is you're putting bullets into their gun and they're going to shoot right back at you with some added bullets. And they're going to do that very quickly. So the self-serving ego of uh, tear down and, and disrespect is only going to last a second, second half. In fact, they'll probably interrupt you before you, you get done um, saying your piece or ripping them a new one or whatever. So just become consciously aware of that. That's what I'm asking you to do, not just when you're talking to new people, but also when you're inviting people and when you're talking to customers, prospects, fellow coaches or business owners, leadership roles, all that sort of stuff. Confrontation is just something that's it's a part of life. And if you can master confronta confrontation with the aim of renewing and restoring versus tearing down and disrespecting, it's one of those things that can mean the difference between um, becoming a six-figure earner or a seven-figure earner and then some. It's a pretty cool deal. Okay, so one thing I want you to be aware of this in this whole lesson, I want you guys to know this doesn't mean that you have to respond and try to renew and restore everyone that you get into a confrontation with or everyone that's just rude to you or mean-spirited or they show concern. If somebody is closed-minded, then just walk away. Go somewhere else. Don't even bother wasting your breath. If they have an open mind, then yeah, by all means, the aim is to renew and restore. And last but certainly not least, you guys notice a pattern by now, right? The consistency, the same consistency that I want you to have with the daily core activities every single day. You got to be talking to at least 20 new people that you've never talked to before every single day. Invite at least 10 people per day to a challenge group, a fitness group, an accountability group, a support group, a business group, the profit group, something. Invite them to look at some information, watch a video, to watch, listen, or attend some information about whatever it is that you want to invite them to. Post a great interactive question that gets the conversation going on your timeline each and every single day. And every day, every single day, share a great success story on your timeline and brag about the person in your own words and personal growth and development every single day. By the way, this counts as personal growth and development every single day. And one last note very quickly. Danny Johnson, in my opinion, is probably the master of disarming dissension. I don't even really know of other personal development speakers really that go much into it. Um, they might scratch the surface a little bit. Most of them don't at all, but Danny Johnson really gets deep into it. So you can always go, go to her website, dannyjohnson.com, D-A-N-I, johnson.com. She's got a lot of really great material over there. All personal growth and development. All right, that concludes this video. Thank you.